Okay, welcome back to Florida Naturally. We are in Bayport. We have Nicole Tumbleson here, an archae- local archaeologist. Hi, Nicole. Hi. What's happening here? Well, uh, we have a project here going at Bayport. Um, you know, I work for the Florida Public Archaeology Network, mm-hmm. and I'm also a maritime archaeologist and the outreach coordinator at the network. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were approached by a local historic preservation society over in Brooksville to help them out um, to preserve some shipwrecks that they believed were out here at Bayport. And so what we agreed to do was to go out and do a survey and see if we could locate these shipwreck sites and um, try to get as much information as we could so that they could be protected. Tell us some things that you've uh, you found. I mean, maybe you haven't actually identified them yet, but you've found some interesting little artifacts. We have, actually. Uh, it's been a very good week. We, um, we have some large pieces of iron that we w- believe are the outside of the hull of the ship. Um, they actually have holes in them where some of the wooden beams would have gone through um, and been used to support the paddle wheel box because uh, allegedly, uh, at least according to the official records of the Union and Confederate navies uh, during the Civil War, in September of 1863 the uh, Union blockading ships found a 200 foot long side wheel steamer here at Bayport and it was a blockade runner and they wanted to attempt to uh, capture it and what happened was the Confederacy ended up burning it to keep it out of Union hands. And so um, some of the stuff that we found so far kind of goes along with that story. It was an iron hold vessel, so we have found a lot of iron. Um, like I said, we found those beams that would have been supportive for the paddle wheel boxes. It seems like the hull itself probably uh, collapsed over to the side and the deck fell over on top of it. So we have some of the machinery on top of the side of the hull. Um, with some decking. So we actually have exposed some of the wooden decking and planks. Um, We found a a pretty amazing find on uh, Wednesday of this week. We found a sink. Um, It was actually something that would have been used in an officer's cabin. Hmm. And there was a a brass hinge that was attached to a ceramic piece that would have been part of the sink. And it was something that they could just fold down in their quarters and use, put water in it, wash their face Mm -hmm. or whatever, and then put it back away. Um, And then we found a lot of machinery pieces to Mm -hmm. go along with that. So it it seems like, I'm not going to say absolutely that this is the the, uh, Confederate blockade runner that we're looking for, but everything seems to point in that direction. Well, good luck in this in this search, and um, uh, hopefully you can get some more funding and come back here again and look at it some more. We'll be back in just a moment to take a look at some of the things that were found on the wreck site. We are at the Crystal River Preserve State Park, uh, which is where our uh, Florida Public Archaeology Network office is located for the Central Regional Center. And these are some of the artifacts that you found in Bayport. So uh, why don't we just kind of run down the run down the list. There's some pretty interesting things here, it looks like. Yeah, there are, actually. Uh, One of the first things that we found when we were diving on the site was this uh, brass hinge. Um, We're not really sure yet if this is actually contemporaneous with the site. We have to do a little more investigation. But as you can see, it has this, you know, copper color, so we know it's got some type of copper alloy and even a little copper screw here in the back. This is probably iron. Uh, this spring back here. One of the next things that we found was this deck plate Um, and as we've cleaned it up these were encrusted with a lot of mud and uh, different barnacles. You can actually see some keyholes here where it's almost if you have a boat you're familiar with the key that will go in to turn this piece. So This is actually two pieces. This would have screwed off this piece would have been screwed into the deck Mm -hmm. um, and this could have been an opening for any type of holding tank like for fresh water or something like that. Uh, One of the more interesting artifacts that we found was this copper alloy hinge and we were really perplexed when we found this because uh, if you notice it has ceramic inside And so we brought it back to the lab and we did a little bit of research and we realized that this is actually part of a sink that would have been in an officer's cabin. Um, And basically this bottom part would have been um, secured to a bulkhead 
on the side of the cabin, and then it would have had a sink that they could fold down, put some water in it, wash their face, and then fold it back up to save room, you know, some, something they would have done on the ship. Uh, we also found some ceramic pieces that were associated with that, and we're still not really sure if these are actually part of the sink or if it's part of a um, holding container of some sort. If you notice it's got this kind of crackling effect on it, that's because it has a glaze on the outside, uh, probably a salt glaze of some sort. Mm -hmm. And they would have glazed ceramics if it were, were to hold some type of liquid. That way it wouldn't you know, seep out of the porous mm -hmm. uh, ceramic. So we've got some pieces of that. Uh, we also found some smaller pieces of uh, burnt glass and some cracked glass, a little bit of blue gla glass that we're doing a little research to see um, what could have been held in the, the blue glass containers. Mm -hmm. We also found some uh, braided wire, smaller pieces of braided wire, which could have been part of the rigging. Uh, because we know it had at least one mast, most likely two, but the um, historical documents only record them seeing one. Mm -hmm. And then one of the really cool finds, uh, Saturday, about 2 o'clock on the last day of field cool. work, <laughs> which is what always happens, uh, we located another shipwreck site. And cool. it is likely a sailing vessel. And one of the first things we noticed was this block and tackle. Um, this piece is what's called the shiv. Uh, you can see here the bushing is actually in a triangular pattern, so we should be able to date a time period. But we're thinking that this would range somewhere in the mid-19th uh, century. So if this is associated with one of the vessels that were lost at Bayport, uh, one of the blockade runners will be able to tell how long that uh, how long that vessel was actually in use before the Civil War, which is pretty cool. And this piece, typically these shivs will survive for a long time because they're made out of a wood called lignum vitae, which is uh, a very hard wood. And you can see here there's a groove where the line or the rope would have gone on here. Um, the bottom part is actually called the cheek, and these don't usually survive because they are not made out of a wood that's as hard. They're usually made out of a softer wood, but you can see that Gorgeous. it's one, si one whole side of the block. So it's a pretty amazing find for us. Very nice. So that's probably oak, huh? Probably oak, mm -hmm. yeah. Very, very neat find. So what's next for this wreck? Are you going to apply for more funding to try to see if you can go back on it? Yeah, I mean, originally we went out to this, what we think is the steamer site um, just to try to answer some initial questions um, as far as date range and whether it could actually be that site. Uh, we're pretty sure that it is, and we're going to see what happens, but we're going to probably seek some more funding to go back out there. We are going to go out in the next couple of weeks and um, document the other vessel that we just found where this block and tackle came from because we're very concerned about its um, where it's located because it's very close to um, Bayport Park and it's an area that's readily accessible. And we'd like to think that people wouldn't want to disturb the archaeological material because that information is lost if they do. But we want to make sure we can get out there pretty soon to try to map that one. Okay. Well, uh, thanks a lot for your time, and we'll, uh, we'll follow this along as the story develops. Okay. Well, thanks, Jeff. All right.